without showing us the writing on the panel, he drops in the chalk just for theatrical effect. When he thinks we're convinced the spirits are done, he separates the slates, revealing his pre-written solution. The illusion is complete, and he never even summoned one spirit. The magician has a trick that is perfect for a first date, Valentine's Day, or any time you want to say I love you with flowers. All he needs are a beautiful girl in extremely tight pants, and of course, a rose. She just happens to have one on that old-fashioned cigarette tray. Gotta love a girl who doesn't smoke and brings her own flower. In Hollywood, she's a total catch. Well, the magician has the flower and the girl. Now, what does he have in mind? From the look on her face, you can tell that she hopes his intentions are honorable. But she knows the masked man all too well. She's a brave girl to let him approach from behind. Maybe his magical trances really work. What's this? He's plunged the rose straight through her back and out through her stomach. That's one way to touch a girl's heart. Though for this much grief, she'd probably prefer jewelry. Now that his hand is out, she appears to be quite relieved and stunning as ever. But we're not letting him get away before he reveals the secrets. So how did the magician impale the girl with the rose, then remove the flower without incident? You've been looking at the secret all along. When the assistant enters, we notice that she's carrying an old-fashioned tray used by cigarette girls in nightclubs and Vegas casinos. Whenever assistants carry an unusual object or wear an outlandish costume, you can bet that it has something to do with the secret. When the girl strips off her jacket and elaborate blouse, you can see that her outfit was covering this fake arm. It's held in place by this shoulder harness. The fake arm disguises the fact that her real arm is tucked under her blouse and across her stomach. For the trick, she wears a black glove just like the magician. You'll notice that the ruffles on the blouse conceal the fact that her hand is hiding underneath. The front of the blouse is left open, which makes it easy for her to slip her hand from between the ruffles. The fake hand is attached to the side of the tray away from the audience, so they assume both of her hands are holding the tray as she enters. The magician approaches the girl from behind and pretends to plunge the flower through the girl. He's careful to keep his hand directly behind the girl's back. At the same time, the girl pushes her gloved hand through her blouse. But how does the flower get from behind her back to inside her shirt? Before the trick began, a duplicate flower was concealed inside. This is the flower that the magician takes after she drops it on the tray. The original flower has been gimmicked with clear plastic tape, so it easily attaches to the back of the girl's leather jacket. When she pushes the duplicate from her blouse, it appears that the original flower has passed right through her body. A little dramatic acting creates the illusion of agony. And that's how the magician appears to tickle a girl's fancy with a magical rose. Next, the magician exposes the amazing secret to biting a quarter in half. You won't believe how he does it. And then, he walks through the deadly sharp blades of a giant turbo fan and survives to show you how it's done. When magic's biggest secrets finally reveal return. Next, the magician will attempt a little close-up magic using an ordinary quarter. In case you're wondering, this authentic quarter is legal tender for all debts, public and private. The magician places the quarter into his mouth and appears to be taking a bite out of it. Take a closer look. Those are genuine teeth marks. That's one way to get your minerals and your money's worth at the same time. Now watch. He spits. He scores. The quarter is back in one piece. A neat trick for less than a buck. So how does the magician bite a chunk out of the quarter, especially when we can't even see his teeth? 
And does he really spit the missing piece back out, restoring the quarter in front of our eyes? I wouldn't bet on it, not even 25 cents. Here's the secret. The real quarter has been rigged to bend, then spring back into place. When the top is folded back, it appears as though it has been bitten off. Here we see that when it looks like he's taking a bite, he's merely using his mouth to fold the coin, hiding the top part behind the bottom section. See, there's the folded piece. When he appears to spit the missing chunk and restore the quarter, he's simply releasing his thumb and allowing the top half to spring back into place. Ka-ching! No one suspects the rigged coin is simply unfolding before their eyes. And that's why he makes the big bucks. The magician will attempt to cheat death one more time as he takes on the spinning blades of this giant turbo fan. The fan is positioned in a framework and behind a protective canvas shield that will prevent others from harm and to save us from a gruesome sight should anything go wrong. You're looking at an actual turbo fan that is capable of slicing a human to pieces in a matter of seconds. The assistants enter to give the magician the help and encouragement he needs to perform this dangerous trick. On his command, they open the protective shield to reveal the razor-sharp blades. Remember, this is a professionally trained, world-class magician. Do not attempt this or any other illusions at home. You can see that there is room in the framework behind the fan. Keep your eyes on the magician. He steps up into the frame, so he's standing directly behind the spinning blades. Not the safest place to be, but the object is for the magician to defy a horrifying death. The assistants close the shield and bolt it into place, carefully sealing the canvas. He's ready. There go the lights. And there he is, still standing behind the deadly blades. But what's this? He seems to be pushing his hand through the spinning blades and out of the canvas shield. Yet the turbo fan is still spinning. pulls his hand back through. I must be seeing things because that is impossible. The lights go out again and the girls enter. They unbolt the front of the frame and open the shield. And there is the masked man standing behind the rotating blade still in one piece. There's no way for him to have passed his arm through the canvas without being sliced to pieces. It must be an illusion. The frame is bolted shut one more time, and the canvas shield is sealed. Let's see what happens. The girls back away to a safe distance as the magician gets ready. There go the lights. They're back on in an instant. Maybe the turbo fan is causing a power shortage. No matter. We can clearly see the shadow of the magician on the shield. But that's not a shadow. That's really his hand. And now his foot. That's no illusion. He should be shredded by now, yet he continues to pass through that fan as if it weren't even there. He's out, and the fan keeps spinning away. The magician has challenged death yet again and won. Good job, masked man. I'm truly your biggest fan. Up next, the incredible secret behind walking through an industrial turbo fan. When magic's biggest secrets finally revealed returns.
We just saw the mass magician walk through the spinning blades of an industrial turbofan and survive. So how does the magician pass through the razor-sharp blades of the fan without being sliced and diced like a mountain of coleslaw or a mound of julienne fries? The secret is a matter of mechanics and split-second timing. First of all, the blades of the fan are real, and they are very sharp. But you know by now that when a magician prevents you from seeing something, that something is the secret. But he's not making the magic happen. This guy is. From this angle, we can see that the frame around the fan is built to allow the fan to slide back and forth. When the stagehand pulls on the cables, a concealed pulley system moves the fan closer to or further from the canvas. The next secret is in the lighting. Two different spotlights are cleverly focused so that the shadow of the fan is exactly the same size whether it's closer to the canvas shield or farther away. Here the fan is positioned close to the canvas. When the spotlight goes out, the fan is moved back and the next spotlight comes on but the shadow looks precisely the same. From the front, you can see the shadow appears to be the same size. The magician waits for the light to go out, steps to the side of the frame as the fan moves back, and then steps in front of it before the next light comes on. Now that he is in front of the fan, he can safely pass his hand through the center seam without harm. The shadow makes it look like his arm is crossing the dangerous blades. From this angle, you can see that he's merely standing in front of the rotating fan. See? No danger at all. As long as he doesn't lean back. But how did he get back behind the revolving blades by the time the frame was opened? Simple. When the light goes out, he just steps to the side and reverses the process when the fan slides forward. The lights come back on, and he looks like he's standing exactly where he started. Then it all happens again one more time. The lights go out, the magician sneaks around the fan, and when the lights come back on, he splits the seam and steps through. The audience thinks he's magically walking through the twirling fan. And there you have enough secrets to make your head spin. Next time, The Masked Magician returns to reveal more of magic's biggest secrets.